Why are you banned still? I don't understand. Okay. Well, that's gone, so I can go Vanquish Soul. I don't know. Nothing seems fun. I get. I can't go back to Magic. The Magic Mafia is still after me. I can't play Pokemon. This is boring. Why is Christian calling me? Hey there, buddy. What's up? How's your day going? Look, dude, you just go check it, the ban list. Go check the ban list. It's not going to change anything. I'm telling you, dude, 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 just go take a look. Just trust me. It is important. I mean, all right, I'll look at it, but... You will not regret it. Just go do it. Okay. Yeah, I'll talk to you later, Christian. Okay, bye-bye. Right. We're back, baby. Lads! In case it wasn't abundantly clear, we're doing an Orcus deck profile today, so. Look, let's just dive right into it. I'm so excited, I don't even care. Let's go. All right, so starting off with the main deck. Um, normally I start with three ofs, but I'm too excited to not show this card off, as it's the first time in a long time I've been able to play it. Uh, we got Harpoor back at one. Harpoor allows you to summon an Orcus monster from your deck by banishing it from the graveyard, um, and it's a quick effect under Babel. Playing three copies of Gearsu, the Orcist Mech Knight. Uh, on normal or special summon, you're able to send an Orcist or World Legacy card from your deck to the graveyard. Uh, then, if there are two or more cards in this card's column, uh, this card becomes a tuner. And then, if you control no other monsters, you can special summon a World Legacy token to both players' field. It's a level one in defense position. We are also playing two copies of Orcist Nightmare. Orcus Nightmare is the Foolish Burial for the archetype. It allows you to dump any dark machine to uh, boost the attack of a monster. This card under Babel can be used in the damage step because it'll increase attack points. So you'll dump and boost the attack points of something and you can win battles that way. It can be used in the damage step, which is pretty crazy. So you want to have it. Uh, we are also playing one copy of the uh, Leol Symbol Skeleton. Uh, one of its fine, it recycles itself. And one copy of World Wand. Uh, the only non-super or higher of the Orcus cards that are in this deck. Uh, but World One is allowing you to summon back from the Banish Pile where a Simple Skeleton is Monster Reborn. We are playing one copy of Babel. We are also playing one copy of Return. I like having the Pot of Greed effect. It can help you unbrick hands uh, that you open larger numbers. If you draw into certain cards, it allows you to get dig, dig deeper into your deck and I just think it's incredibly important. And one copy of Crescendo. There are other cards you could play. You could play like uh, Gizmec Orochi if you wanted to. I just don't have this, I couldn't find the space for it. So this is what I went with and I'm having a blast with this deck. Next up, because it's the best to pair with it, we're playing Horus. Imseti allows you to you know, send itself in another card from your hand to the graveyard to add King Sark and you draw a card. Uh, it's a 3000, it's a level eight, it's a dark, it matters. Uh, we're playing one Duemtef and one Happy. Uh, that's it. That is the whole Horus monster setup. You want the level eights for the Exe for the link uh, XE summoning. Sometimes need them for the synchro summoning, and their effects can matter. So I picked the two with the best effects: the shuffle to uh, the add two from banish, and then the not the protection, the boosting attack and draw. So, and then we're playing three copies of King Sark. King Sark helps you get the Orcus names out of your hand. You want them in the graveyard, that's where they're strongest, except for Gearsu. So having three King Sark actually comes in clutch. We are also playing the Resonator package, though the Crimson Gaia package, we're playing three Vision Resonator, one Crimson Gaia. These cards are super useful. It allows you to summon things like Barone without a normal summon, depending on what your hands are. Um, and the free extender, free extender, free search, lets you dig through your deck, super helpful. Then for the non-engine, we're playing three copies of Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring. We're playing one of each of the Banishing Bysteels, so one Magna Hut, one Druus Worm, one Sauronir, and one Baldrake. And then we are also playing three copies of Infinite and Permanence. These are all just very powerful cards that gives us 10 hand traps that allow us to be, be better equipped to interrupt plays. Um, if you're not playing against the deck where the Bysteels matter, you can side them out for other cards that are in the side deck. We are also playing one copy of Armageddon Knight. This is all non-engine cards here as well. Armageddon Knight's just a good starter. Uh, we're playing two copies of Triple Tactics Talent. It, it's a good card to help us play through interruptions, uh, which the deck can struggle with. One copy of Called by the Grave, 
one copy of Foolish Burial, and one copy of Reinforcement of the Army. Uh, Rota is just a deck thin for Armageddon Knight. It gives you two copies of it. And then the final card is uh, Harpy's Feather Duster. It is exactly 40, and I'm having a ton of fun with this list. Let's move on to the extra deck, shall we? We have a lot of interesting cards, and I'll kind of go over why. So first we're gonna start off with two copies of Galatea. It's the best card in Yu-Gi-Oh. I love this card. I'm so happy you get to play it with it at almost kind of full power again. Galatea allows you to set an Orca Speller Trap by targeting and shuffling in a machine monster from your banish pile. Um, you don't have to set. So one of the most important things about uh, Galatea and uh, the other Orca's names is you don't have to do the second part of the effect, you're only required to target and shuffle. Everything else is a choice. You don't have to set anything if you don't have anything to set. Uh, we are playing one copy of Long Girsu. Uh, this one is able to send linked monsters to the graveyard. Can't be destroyed by card effect while it's linked. It's 2,500. Uh, then we are playing two copies of Ding Girsu. Ding Girsu is one of the best boss monsters in all of Yu-Gi-Oh's history. A non-targeting send on summon or a protection effect and you can attach Spanish Monster to it as material, which is crazy strong. Then we're playing one copy of Barone de Fleur and one copy of Bicesteel Dispiter. Uh, with the Vision Resonators, you have a lot of level eights that you can freely go into these cards with. There's a couple of choices with uh, the next three cards, if you so desired. Dispiter being able to negate things and uh, return Banish cards to the deck helps you with grind games. It's really big. Barone de Fleur is really strong at protecting you from things like Nibiru and other hand traps just off of like Imseti and things like that. So both are incredibly useful and you will try to end on Barone when possible. Uh, then we're playing one copy of number 38, one copy of the Zombie Vampire, and one copy of Coach King Giant Trainer. Coach King Giant Trainer, full disclosure, can be number 90 if you have it. I don't have one. So this is an option. Another card this could be is SP Little Knight. We have another card that's completely optional in the extra deck uh, that I'll be showing you off in a little bit. So Coach King Giant Trainer and other card are able to be substituted for other and more expensive or more versatile meta cards. The Zombie Vampire is to help you dig. If you didn't see any of your Orcus cards in your opening hand, it helps you dig four deeper to be able to potentially get into them. And then number 38 lets you play through like spell-based decks. These could be like the number 90, number 38 would be a really good two level eight Xyz monsters, two rank eight Xyz monsters, so. And then finally, we're playing one copy of Link Karibo, just in case you need Gearsu, one IP, one Nightmare Unicorn. This card could be substituted for SP Little Knight, but I'm playing it in place of it for now is Topologic Zeroboros. And then finally is one copy of Access Code Talker to the side deck. Side deck is a little wonky, but I'm really enjoying it. I think it's pretty strong. So first things first, we're playing three copies of the big old Space Rock. There's so many decks it's really good against, you wanna have it. Um, I didn't like it in the main, but having it in the side really, really works. We're playing two copies of Phantasme. This can be any two, this is a flex pick. I chose this because I find there's a lot of decks Link Summoning right now, and I want to have the option to be able to draw and, uh, and fix my hands, and this does that. Two copies of Lightning Storm, I just wanna have more back row hate, just in case. It also works as like a board clear and a forced interruption. And finally, we're playing one copy of Trap Trick, which is to use either your Eradicators or your Deck Devastation Viruses. These are really strong, and you play so many darks that are really high level, that uh, high attack, that this doesn't matter. It's real easy to get into them and use them. But I wanted to play three and three, but I thought Trap Trick allowed me to play both, and it l took up less extra deck or side deck space, so it allowed me a little bit more room. And last, but certainly not least, is Evenly Matched. But lads, that is my Orcist Horus deck profile. This is probably the most competitive version of Orcus currently, um, is a version like this. I'm having a ton of fun with it. It's super explosive. It's insane lines that can net you, like you can simplify game states really easily and get into very explosive moments where you'll just win the game out of nowhere. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, smash that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, hit the bell, let us know what we're doing right. And uh, until next time, lads, good fun. Have luck.